What is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys I wanted to check out a little bit more about Luxembourg and I was like let me find a short video to start to kind of see a little bit about it just to get an idea because it I mean it's not the smallest in Europe smallest country in Europe but I was like it's pretty small and from what I've seen they say it's the richest one of the richest countries in Europe and I think it's top three worldwide so we finna see riches and expensive, I believe. So we finna see a little bit why does Luxembourg exist. Hey, if you know a little bit more, let me know something. But I think this would be interesting. Be interested to see this. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Send down those recommendations. Luxembourg. It's a nation which sits in an important location between the French, German and Dutch speaking worlds. It's also not a very large country with a very small population, especially when compared to the major nations and kingdoms which have flanked it throughout its life. This raises an obvious question. Why does Luxembourg exist and why wasn't it incorporated into its larger neighbours? So, Luxembourg has been geographically important since the Middle Ages, back when it was a duchy and a part of the Holy Roman Empire. As of 1475, Luxembourg was in a union with the Duchy of Burgundy, mm. and it was ruled by a man called Charles the Bold, whom the King of France was not a fan of due to Charles's immense influence there. In 1477, Charles did the French King a solid and died, <laughs> and it took a whole six seconds for France to pounce and take these lands. To protect the remainder, Charles's sole heir, Mary, was married to the future Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian Habsburg. The remaining areas were consolidated and Luxembourg was incorporated mm. into what's called the Habsburg Netherlands. These remained under the direct control of the Holy Roman Emperor until the 16th century, when Charles V abdicated the throne, giving them to Spain. It wasn't long until the Dutch decided that this arrangement wasn't for them, and so off they went, leaving Luxembourg as a part of the remaining Spanish Netherlands. In the 17th mm. century, war with France saw Luxembourg shrink again. And it's so crazy how it's in between, like, like they said, some major, major countries and... And that they used to be a part of, man. That's that's pretty interesting. But consider how small it is. You would have, you would think. I'm sure it don't take too long to get to any other, uh, no, the other countries around. It don't take that long to get to the Netherlands, get to Germany. None of that. In the 17th century, war with France saw Luxembourg shrink oh, again, and after the War of the Spanish Succession, it got handed over to Austria. And it remained with Austria until the French Revolution and its subsequent incorporation into the First French Republic in 1795. In the following two decades, there was a lot of war, a lot of Napoleon, the Holy Roman Empire was dissolved, and when the dust settled, Luxembourg's future was decided by the victors at the Congress mm. of Vienna. Here, several things happened to Luxembourg. First, it came under the rule of William I, the king of the brand new United Kingdom of the Netherlands, and entered into a personal union with it. Second, it lost this territory to Prussia. Third, it was brought into the German Confederation, the sort of successor to the Holy Roman Empire, which gave it a sort of mixed constitution, with the nation being ran by William's Dutch administrators and defended or occupied mm. by Prussian troops. And fourth, to make up for all of this, the Duchy of Luxembourg became the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, because that way William couldn't complain. Now, it wasn't long until the United Kingdom of the Netherlands broke up, with Belgium leaving and taking this massive chunk of Luxembourg with it, giving it wow. its own borders. It stayed under the control of the Dutch king, who soon found himself in serious financial <laughs> problems. To the rescue came Napoleon III, who in 1867 offered him a bunch of cash for Luxembourg, which he accepted. Now, Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of the North German Confederation, objected. To prevent war, Britain and Russia arbitrated and came mm. up with a solution. This saw Luxembourg remain independent and further declare itself to be forever neutral. It would remain under the control of the Dutch. That Lord. is, was also that is very interesting. That is crazy. Like, just purchase their own little country just like that. But, man, just imagine, like, I, I, this is a serious question. Who do y'all think, if it wasn't considered Luxembourg, were this part of the country, do y'all think it would be more up in France, in the Netherlands, or in Germany? What do y'all think it could possibly fit in to belong in one of those countries awarded that north german troops would withdraw and in return berlin would get extra economic concessions luxembourg would continue to be ruled by the dutch monarchy until wilhelmina took the throne in 1890 the grand duchy didn't permit for women in its line of succession oh, and so it went to adolf of nassau this state of now independent neutrality remained until 1914 when german troops invaded and world war one after the war the entente didn't really know what to do with luxembourg except for the belgians who really wanted to annex it 
The French said no when the remaining members oh, reaffirmed Luxembourgish neutrality in 1920, which would last a whopping 20 years. This time, when the Germans came knocking for a second time, Luxembourg wasn't just occupied but also incorporated into Germany itself. Mm. This of course wouldn't last because Germany lost the Second World War and Luxembourg was restored and it would remain independent to this day. Wow. Although it would renounce its permanent neutrality and became a member of NATO and the European Economic Community shortly afterwards. And that is how Luxembourg still exists. I hope you enjoyed this that episode, is, and a special thanks to my That people. is very interesting, very, very interesting. Definitely got to learn a little bit more, and my check out, because I was scrolling through when I found this video, I seen it looked like a couple that went and visited Luxembourg. I think that's very interesting, just considering how small it is, you know? And I know it's not the smallest in Europe, because I've seen some others look like they were a part of some other countries and stuff, but definitely want to learn more, see more, stuff like that, but yeah, hey, man. To me, who you think it would have, if it wasn't Luxembourg, what, who would have had control over this land, you know? It was plenty of options, a lot of, you know, different uh, meetings that were going on to, to kind of claim this almost, claim this land almost. But that's all I have. Y'all definitely send me some more recommendations so I can learn a little bit more about Luxembourg. Hit that subscribe button. That's all I have. Y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. I'm out.